They say a change is as good as a rest, which probably explains why even mildly successful series like Generic Shooter Man B get rewarded with 15 spin-offs like Shooter Man Goes to the Beach, Shooter Man Does Tax Returns, and Shooter Man Goes to Court for War Crimes. On the one hand, seeing a continuation of a beloved story is great for dedicated fans. I, for one, cannot wait for Shooter Man's upcoming prison food cooking sim. And yet, sometimes a spin-off doesn't always go to plan. For every Better Call Saul, there's a Joey. The gaming industry is well versed in churning out similar looking reboots, remasters, and reduxes. Redu reduxes? Re geese? <sighs> but sometimes the mysterious art of video game spin offs breaks from tradition by giving us something truly bizarre, like a sports ball in our platformer or a real time strategy in our shooter. Let's look at some! I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game spin offs that broke with series tradition. Number 10 Metal Gear Acid. It's hard to break the mold when you've already repeatedly smashed it into a thousand pieces, and with Hideo Kojima and the Metal Gear series, you're never too far away from ludicrous detours like fire whales, naked cartwheels, and bosses that pass judgement on your choice of games. And yet, despite this, a turn-based tactical card game was a legitimate surprise nobody expected, not even from the man who created a game out of collecting babies. Metal Gear Acid, released in 2005 for the PSP, turned the formula completely on its head, foregoing the real-time action for a more deliberate, strategic approach. Each level played out across a grid system, tasking you with sneaking past enemies or taking them out turn by turn. Your abilities and loadout were dictated by the card you equipped, leading to some serious pondering when creating your deck. Even the classic Metal Gear cutscenes were replaced with illustrated comic-style exchanges. Now, every franchise seems to be dabbling in a card game on the side, but at the time it was a novel concept and a well-received addition that worked nicely in a handheld format. Number 9. Minecraft Story Mode Before their sudden and sad demise, Telltale Games were the go-to studio for any narrative-driven spin-off, drawing from TV, comic books, and even other game titles. Tales from the Borderlands, for example, was certainly an unusual departure from the series' typical high-octane looter-shooter action, but it served to very competently expand on the story from a game universe that actually already had a story. Minecraft, on the other hand, uh, doesn't. It's a genre-defining, record-breaking sandbox where you could create almost anything but a narrative no chance. Which makes Minecraft Story Mode such a huge change from the original title, not just in terms of storyline, but also with its entire take on gameplay. Rather than unlimited freedom, you have a linear path, and an uninspired one at that, without a pre-existing cast of characters to keep you hooked. Oh look! Everyone's favourite, um, pig character! Yay! Yay? A blank slate with no creative limits could have been a perfect canvas for an epic tale, but instead they decided on a convention culture spoof called Endercon. And never mind, I have actually played it. Don't. Number 8. Star Fox Adventures While we've criticised Fox McCloud's land and naval escapades in Lilac Wars aka Star Fox 64, we'd never discourage him from giving new hobbies a go. Trying to be Nintendo's answer to Han Solo and harassing indigenous wildlife, however, was not what we had in mind. Star Fox Adventures was the heavily anticipated launch title for the GameCube in 2002, but it caused a stir for existing fans when the gameplay took a bold new direction, becoming more action-adventure than on-rails shooter. This title took heavy inspiration from the 3D Zelda releases, is it that obvious? But that's just scratching the surface of a rather interesting development process. The Rare-developed title was originally intended to be an entirely new IP called Dinosaur Planet, which explains the radical shift in genre and, uh, well, the dinosaurs. Likewise, Crystal, the newly introduced fox lady person thing, was carried across from this original concept, as when Nintendo legend Shigeru Miyamoto noticed the similarities to Fox, a Star Fox label was slapped on for extra brand recognition. Sadly, it was a rather underwhelming last gasp for Rare before they drifted into years of purgatory under Microsoft. Number 7. World of Warcraft. With the monumental success of this culture-changing MMO, it's weird to think that this started life as an ambitious spin-off from an existing well-established IP. Common knowledge to most of us, but spare a thought for the poor youths that have grown up thinking Fortnite invented dancing and games just existed in clouds. The original Warcraft Orcs and Humans, released way back in 1994, was an old-school real-time strategy title, a genre that's arguably becoming more obsolete, but one which Warcraft helped define in its heyday. 
for the series to not only dominate one genre, but then take on an entirely new one, emerging victorious against previous MMO titles like EverQuest and Ultima Online, is very impressive. And with over 100 million people having played the iconic title, you could argue that World of Warcraft is the most successful spin-off of all time. Number 6. Chocobo Racing Say you're a late 90s publishing executive and your boss has demanded a new entry in your incredibly complex RPG franchise to be released ASAP. If you responded to this high-pressure grilling with, um, uh, a, a, a kart racer? Then congratulations, you've successfully done a business! The 90s were a golden age for wacky motorsport when everyone was cramming their top gaming mascots into dubiously built go-karts. Makes perfect sense for whimsical platforming titles, but for an epic 100-hour-plus RPG it was a surprising move. In a series like Final Fantasy, where characters and settings are reset for each instalment, how can you possibly find an iconic face for your racer? Square's answer, the cute, fluffy chocobo, of course! Perfect, except they strapped miniature motorbikes to its feet? What are you doing, you monsters? It can run fast enough without those! This is too much! Between ridiculous design choices and a forgettable roster filled with generic series archetypes like Golem, Goblin, and Black Magician, Chocobo Racing couldn't leave its mark on the kart racing market, but at least we'll always have that wacky races style intro to look back on. Number 5. Halo Wars Look, gamers are a very diverse species. Not everyone who picks up a controller is an energy drink chugging FPS fiend who lives for 360 no scopes and po <clears throat> poning noobs. <laughs> Sometimes a fan of the shooter genre can dabble in a little bit of strategy too, without being bombarded with horrendous abuse about our serious potato aim. And it's that key crossover of FPS and RTS fans that Microsoft aimed to appeal to with 2009's Halo Wars. Set 21 years before the events of Halo Combat Evolved, this spin-off featured a grand storyline and received the same cinematic treatment that has become a mainstay of the series, and for a console strategy game, boasted some respectable gameplay and controls too. Fortunately, rather than bungee delving into unfamiliar territory, this title was handed to veterans of the strategy market, Ensemble Studios, who were responsible for the iconic Age of Empires and Age of Mythology series. Number 4. Yoshi's Safari you really have to feel for Yoshi sometimes. The poor dinosaur does everything he can to help his old buddy Mario, and what does he get in return? Dumped into a pit of death. All so Mr. Can't Find the Right Castle can jump a little bit further. It's an abuse of trust, let alone animal rights, but surely Yoshi knows when to say no. Right? Apparently not. According to Yoshi's Safari, a very playful name for what is essentially Mario forcing his all-too-trusty steed into gunning down an entire species in cold blood. An on-rails light gun shooter is a far cry from the usual playful platforming Yoshi's accustomed to, and this title made full use of the Super Nintendo's Super Scope, an impressive but niche peripheral that would resurface years later in the Super Smash Bros. series. Looking past the genocide for a second, the game received favourable reviews, though it suffered commercially thanks to poor timing, as its release in 1993 came just a year after Mortal Kombat caused major controversy for the industry with its own gruesome blood sport. Good news for Yoshi's freedom, at least. Number 3. Pokemon Snap one of the first console spin-offs for the wildly popular Pokemon series, Pokemon Snap is still amongst the strangest concepts for a standalone game even today. A professional photographer sim, set in a Pokemon universe where catching them all is limited to catching them on camera only, probably because of some sudden wildlife conservation laws. It's beautifully mad and yet surprisingly compelling. Rather than throwing the usual imprisonment Pokeballs, you'd throw Pestaballs, which is slightly lower down on the Geneva Convention's list of naughty things. The trick was nailing the right composition for your Pokey Paparazzi picks. Snapping half a Pidgey facing away from the camera, for example, won't impress a Professor Oak much. Ba, 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 ooh, so you got the brain, but have you got the touch? But a variety of Pokemon, all posing in the same shot, could just net you the top spot in his yearly wildlife calendar. Some Pokemon are rarer than others, which adds even more challenge and mystery to the criminally low number of levels on offer, and led to all sorts of wild rumours in the days before widespread internet guides. We'll probably never see a moonwalking Mewtwo, but at least we have photographic evidence of a Pikachuno. Number 2. Mega Man Soccer 
Much like the kart racing craze, sporting spin-offs were surprisingly popular for a time as well. But while a certain plumber made it look easy, not everyone had the same level of versatility. Mega Man, for example, while perfectly equipped to handle a team of robotic enemies in the field of battle, couldn't quite translate that skill to the field of football. Mega Man Soccer, released in 1994, was an early example of an ambitious side project that couldn't quite bring home the trophies. The game's limited camera only showed a portion of the pitch, which was either a statement against disgusting long ball tactics or a terrible design decision. Uh, probably the second one. The frame rate would also drop like a stone when more than a couple of characters were on screen, not ideal for a game featuring flashy specials like a cleaver shot that literally kills the opposition keeper. Throw in an absurd plot involving a tournament interrupted by angry robots, which obviously calls for more angry robots in response, and you've got a very unusual but not very successful spin-off for the mega-ist of mans. Number 1. Mario & Rabbids Kingdom Battle it's a spin-off double whammy, otherwise known as a crossover. Seeing as Mario and pals have dabbled in literally every hobby ever, it was inevitable he'd be back for more. Narrowing down the staggering volume of extracurricular activities is another matter, though. What do you get the man who's been a plumber, doctor, tennis star, footballer, golfer, hotel owner, racing driver, pinball wizard, party animal, and a wildlife poacher? Well, you get him some rabbits. Those annoying little buggers will keep him occupied for a while. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle released in 2017 as a surprise hit from a series where we thought we'd seen it all. Going against all logic, this Ubisoft Nintendo mashup wasn't a simple minigame fest, but rather a deceptively deep strategy title in the same vein as the XCOM series, albeit without the uh, savage RNG deaths. Featuring turn-based battles between Nintendo A-listers and cheap rabid knockoffs, tactical positioning behind cover and smart use of abilities is vital. But the strangest part of this bizarre mushroom lady trip? The hard rock soundtrack from Airborne that accompanied each trailer. Tactical gameplay, actual firearms, and hard rock? Nice try, Nintendo. You almost had us fooled there with your clever disguise. You're still a kid-friendly company. Come on, what are you doing? And there we have it, some truly surreal deviations from the typical series we know and love. At least they tried something different, and that's the important thing. Why not let us know your favourite video game spin-offs in the comments below? You can follow Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.